Hello and welcome. Today I'll be talking about creating groups in ExactPath. The grouping tool is a great feature to help teachers easily assemble and plan for small group learning. While whole group instruction certainly has its place, we all know the power that targeted learning experiences can bring when they're hyper-focused on specific learning for small groups of students with similar abilities. Today I'll show you how you can leverage the grouping tools to do just that. Building flexible small groups that help you deliver targeted instruction just when you need it. Let's dive in. I'm going to start by selecting my classes from the educator interface. Then I will go ahead and choose groups from the swipe navigation bar. This feature is available to administrators and instructors, but most often used by classroom teachers. Similar ability groups are often built at the class level. So I will begin from over here on the right by selecting my class from this drop down menu. If I only have one class, this drop down won't display and my class will be auto selected for me. Next, I will choose the subject I want to use the grouping tool with today. I can choose between mathematics, reading, and language arts. I'm going to go ahead and stick with math. Now I can go ahead and move on to manually building my groups. I can use this new group tool and I can build the groups in whatever way I want to, selecting from my students on the left. Or I can let the system do the work for me. Let's talk about how the program can help you sort students into groups automatically. I can do that by selecting the domain and skill I want to sort my students by based on their skill statuses in the knowledge map. I'm going to go ahead and select numbers and operations. Then I'm going to go into skills and find the fourth grade skill expanded notation. On the left, I can see student skill statuses appear. It shows me how students are performing against the skill whether they've assessed above it, maybe they haven't reached it, or perhaps some students have some progress, maybe they're actively practicing, or maybe have mastered the skill in their learning path, these skill statuses will be used to help me build my group. Now here's where the fun part comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and select this auto group students button. This will group students based on their level for the selected domain and skill that I chose from the filters. As soon as I hit create groups, all of my students drop into groups. Easy as that. Now I can review what the program has done and make adjustments as I wish. Maybe I wanna go ahead and drag this student Zach who's placed above into the group with assessed above because I know that those students are going to have like skill sets. Similarly, maybe I want to put mastered and practice together because these students worked on this skill or are working on this skill recently. Now I've moved from five groups down to three with between two to four students each. Perhaps that's more conducive to the way my classroom structure is set up. But you saw just how easy it was to drag and drop students to get the groups just how you want them. Now I can go ahead and select this pencil icon next to each group and I can actually name my groups. So maybe I've got some, some fun different, you know, animals, adjectives, maybe my students chose their group names, whatever I want to do, school mascots, you know, various things like that. I can name my groups and those selections will go ahead and stick for me. So now I've got a couple of my groups named. I can also go ahead and add notes about the instruction to help with my lesson plans. So I know here that this is my group that's assessed above. So my note is going to be something about focusing on enrichment and acceleration. All right, so that note's gonna save for me. I can add notes similarly for each of my groups. I can also go to the top here and I can enter a plan of action across the board. Maybe there's a particular text I want to pull that I want to make note of here or some pages that I don't want to forget about. Uh, whatever I want to add here to, to be my lesson plan reminder across the board, perhaps I want to note that here. Now when I'm happy with these selections, I'm happy with the lesson planning I've done, I can go ahead and print my groups using the print button here. Now, as this print option shows up, I can see my different groups. I can see the names I gave for my groups. And I also have this really nice option here to include group notes or not include group notes, simply by checking and unchecking the box. 
so maybe I want to print a clean version to post for my students in the classroom so they know where to go when we start group work. But maybe I want to include a version with some notes for my own personal lesson plans. I can do that in this print option here. I can also use these groups to issue assignments to my students in the program with the simple create assignment option. So I've got this create assignment button for each of my groups. When I click on that, the modal opens up. It lets me make some selections, hunt for some particular uh, content that I want uh, to support this particular skill that I am teaching. And then from there, I can select the items I want to assign and actually assign them to my students. Now, because I'm using it from the grouping tool, it's auto-selected my Leaping Lizards group. I can unselect, I can make changes, but that's the beauty of using the assignment tool from the grouping function. Create my assignment, I'm done. So in addition to the offline small group instruction, I can plan to hold with my students by building groups like this and printing out a copy for myself, can also layer in work for them in the program that is suited to their unique needs. Using the grouping tool is simple and flexible enough to meet those needs. Try it out and take advantage of your exact path data in a way that also improves your instruction.